Okay, so in part one, we set up our interaction interface so that we could approach an actor and press E to interact with it. And now I want to go one step further and make it so we can approach an actor and get a list of interactions and do uh, several different things. Um, so I'm going to get started first by opening the third person character blueprint. And I'm going to look at uh, something I forgot last video actually. Uh, when we exit the interaction area, we remove the widget, but I never set the current actor to interact with uh, back to none. So right now, for example, we can walk up to an interactable and I can walk away and I can still press E and interact with that. And so we need to fix that by taking this set node here and just duplicating it down here. Uh, but I'm not going to plug in a value. So by not plugging anything into the pin here, it's going to set this to none. And when we try to press E to interact, it's not going to work. Uh, and in fact, uh, best practice here is going to be to add an is valid node. So if the actor reference isn't set to anything, uh, it's just not going to do anything. Okay, so let's get started with our interaction list here. I'm going to go to my content browser root, find my interact message widget. And first, I'm actually going to change the name before I open it up here. Uh, right now, it's interact message, but I'm going to change it to interact list. And I'll open that. And I'm going to remove this press E to interact text box. I'll just delete that. And I'm going to go to the palette and find a border. We'll drag that on here. And I'm going to get a vertical box and drag that and drop it inside my border. And now I'm going to uh, select my border and I'll name this uh, just border is fine and set it to is variable. And uh, we'll say size to content. I'm going to check that. And I also want to set the brush color here. So I'm going to set it to maybe like a blue, uh, maybe set the opacity to three quarters. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to grab my vertical box here, and I'm also going to make that a variable, and I'm going to call this uh, list box. And I think that's it for now, so I'm going to close that. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new widget. Uh, right click here, user interface widget blueprint, uh, new user widget, and I'm going to call this uh, interaction list item. Okay, and I'll open that up. And for this one, I'm going to say, uh, first, we don't want to fill the screen. We want to say desired on screen. And I'm going to make a vertical box, uh, sorry, a horizontal box. I'll drag that in here. And I want to add three text elements to the box. So I'm going to grab text here, just drag it to the horizontal box. And I'm going to drag in another one and a third one. I'll zoom in here. All right. Uh, so the first text block here, I'm going to make it a variable and call this uh, key text. And we'll set this to the key we want to press uh, to interact with. And I'm going to use the number keys in my example. So I'm just going to set this to a one for now. Doesn't really matter. And the next text block here, uh, it doesn't have to be a variable. I'm just going to set the text to a colon and a space. Uh, and then the third text block I'm going to set to is variable. And we'll call this uh, name text. And that's it. I'm going to leave it as a text block for now. We'll fill that in with the name of the uh, interaction that we're uh, trying to do with the actor. OK, so I'll compile, save, close that. And uh, let's see, the next thing that I can do here is uh, let's make some changes to our interact interface. So I'll open up the my interact interface and I need to add a function here. And we'll call that get interactions list. And I'm going to add an output to this. So I'll add that here. Uh, I've got to reselect this and it's going to be called list items and it's going to be an array of strings so i'll set this variable type to string and array and one more change i need to make here 
in do my interaction, uh, we want to send uh, which interaction that we want to do. So we want to add an input, and I'm going to call it uh, interaction index. And this is going to be an integer, and uh, just a single integer, not an array. OK, so now let's check out those changes by opening up one of our interactable actors here. I'm going to open up the spotlight. And uh, OK, so originally for do my interaction, we were just doing a single action here, flip-flopping between the two light colors. Now we'll be able to use this interaction index to say uh, what it is we want to do. Uh, but first thing I'm going to do is go here to interfaces, and I'm going to double click this get interactions list, and we'll set up our response to the list. And so I'm going to drag back from list items here and say make array. And this is where I'll define the names of the interactions that we want to have available. I'm going to add a couple of pins here. I'm going to add, uh, make four entries, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Indexes always start at 0. And the first entry is going to say, uh, we'll say turn on. Uh, the next one will say turn off. And uh, we'll say uh, set color green or let's say set color pink. And the fourth one here, set color green. OK, so that's the interactions I want to make available for the spotlight. And the next thing I would do here is on the event graph, uh, rather than this flip-flop, I'm going to delete that. And uh, here, I'll just unhook this, uh, or I don't need to unhook that. What I need to do is move these down here. And uh, first thing we'll do is grab this interaction index, and I'll say switch on int. And we'll add a few pins here, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And now I can plug these into the different actions that I want to do. And uh, so for the first action, uh, we'd said uh, turn on. So I'm going to use set visibility. And we'll check that to positive. And for the second action, we wanted to turn it off. So I'll duplicate that node here. And we'll set new visibility to false. And uh, the third action, uh, index number two, was going to be set the color to pink. And the index number three, the fourth action, was going to be set the color to green. OK, so I've defined all of the different behaviors, and I've named them. Uh, so the last thing I need to do here is set up the actual list, uh, populating the list widget. So I'm going to go back to the third person character. And w originally, when we enter uh, an interaction area, we just add to viewport our interact message widget. Um, and so that's a reference to our widget we named interact message. And I'm going to change that now to reflect the update. I'm going to call it uh, interact list. And so I can drag from that, and I can get a list uh, box. And that's the uh, vertical box that we were going to fill with our different list items. And uh, the first thing I would want to do here is clear uh, children. So we'll clear anything that's already in the list from, say, maybe a previous interaction. And now we want to get. Uh, the list of interactions we're going to fill this with. So what I'm going to do here is from the actor that we, whoever's actor we entered their interact area, we want to get the list from them. So I'll drag from there and say get interactions list. And that's going to return back that array of strings that we made. And so I can drag from that and use for each to iterate through the strings. And uh, for each of those strings, what we're going to do is create a widget. And we'll create that list item, interaction list item widget. Uh, and then what we're going to do is ultimately we're going to add it to the list box, uh, each of these as a new child. So I could drag from here. I could say add child to vertical box. And uh, we're going to plug in the return value here and uh, plug this in.
But I'm not just going to do that right away because what I want to do first before we add it is set that key text and the name text. Uh, so I'm actually just going to use a sequence to keep this a little cleaner here. Add one more pin and uh, we'll plug the last pin to add child. And the first pin, what we'll do here is I'm going to grab the return value and say uh, get key text and set text. And uh, to make this uh, simple, I'm going to use number keys. So basically, I want to use the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that to do the different interactions. And so what I'm going to do is get the array index and add 1. Because the index, uh, of course, always starts at 0. And I'm not going to use the 0 key. We want to start with the 1 key. So we'll just say plus uh, 1. And I'll feed this result into the in text. And it'll automatically make a convert node here, convert that to text for me. And I'll plug in this uh, sequence pin 0 up here. All right, so then the next thing we want to do is uh, set the name text. So I'm going to grab here again from the return value, get name text, and drag from that, set text. And the text for that is going to be the actual string here from the array of list items. So we'll just drag this through here, a little bit of spaghetti, but that's OK. That automatically makes the conversion node for you. And we'll plug this in. All right, so basically we create the widget, we set the key text, uh, then we set the name text, and then we add it to the box. Uh, all right, so let's check it out so far here. See if we can walk up here. And yes, we get our list box, and we're getting all those strings from the uh, interface request. Um, so now the last thing is going to be to set up the actual keys themselves to, uh, to uh, cause those interactions. So I'm going to go back to the third person character. And where we originally have uh, the E keyboard event, I'm going to delete that, right click, and make a one key. Uh, and so I'll plug in the one key event here. And I'm just going to drag these up here so I can make some room to duplicate this. I want to grab these three nodes here and duplicate. I'm going to make uh, four copies, uh, three, co three more copies, a total of four. And I'm going to add in a two key node here. and the 3 and the 4 key as well. OK, so I'll plug all of these in. And uh, the only other thing I need to change here is, of course, the interaction index for each of these. So we'll go 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, so that's basically the end of the setup. Now we're populating our list with whatever interactions the actor has to offer. And we're using our keyboard keys here. You, you could map out more than four if you want. You could have you know, all, all nine or 10 keys. Uh, or you could use something other than number keys if you want. But essentially, we've mapped our number keys to, uh, uh, to cause the different interactions that the, in, that the actor offers. And so let's check it out here. We'll walk up here and I can turn off with two, turn on with one, uh, set pink with three, and four sets it back to green. All right, and so now with all of that set up, I'll show you how quickly you can set up multiple interactions in another actor. Uh, so let's say I'll open up the sphere here. And so originally, let's see here, we're just setting the rotation amount to 10. Uh, and then the event tick here, it slows it down to a stop. So let's say what we'll do here is duplicate this. Maybe, maybe we'll make three different speeds that we can set the, uh, that we can spin the sphere at. And so I'll just move these over here. And again, we'll grab the interaction index and say switch on int. And I'll add those three pins. And uh, let's say for 0, we'll set the rotation amount to 5. 
Uh, one will set the rotation amount to 10, and two will set the rotation amount to 25. And now I just need to set up the names for these interactions. So I go to interfaces here, and on the get interactions list, double click, and drag back, make an array, and I'll add the couple more pins here. So we have 0, 1, and 2. And this was going to be spin slow. Uh, let's say spin medium and uh, spin fast. And just like that, now I can walk up to my sphere actor. And we get our list of options. And I can press 1, spin it slowly, 2, uh, spin medium, and 3, spin fast. All right, so just like that, I've set up uh, multiple interactions uh, by way of a list on another actor. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next video.